I want to I want to just give you a nugget, just a nugget, because it's I got four minutes and six seconds. <laughs> so, uh, Lord, help your servant. I'm I'm gonna go to First Corinthians chapter fifteen. First Corinthians. This is an essential um, part of the faith that you live in, that you walk in. It's, it talks about the resurrection. The, the resurrection is the word means to stand up again. And, and you will all experience, those of us that are born again, if, you, if you're watching online, you're born again. Wherever you are and you're born again, you'll all, ex, you'll all experience the resurrection, to stand up again, the ability to stand up again, the power to stand up again. You, and even though sometimes you've, you're trying to qualify whether you, you received that or not because you had a bad day or you did some stuff you shouldn't have done or you said some stuff you shouldn't have said, but God is not disqualifying you from the ability, the power of resurrection. He's given his life to give that to you, the power to stand up again. That's resurrection. So because you receive resurrection, you'll never die. You'll just stand up again. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 15. It says, now I want to make clear to you, brothers and sisters, this is Paul talking, the gospel I preach to you, which you receive, on which you have taken your stand. So in this, this resurrection thing is, is so important, so powerful. It's going to give you the ability to take a firm foothold in life. So that you're strong and mighty. And you can stand fixed and firm. Satan is a liar. He doesn't want you to understand that you have the power of resurrection already in you. But you already have it. He can't take it from you. I want to make clear for you, brothers and sisters, the gospel I preached to you, which you received on which you have taken your stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold to the message I preached to you, unless you believe in vain. For I pass to, on to you as most important what I also received that Christ Jesus, that Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures. Paul received the revelation that Yeshua died so that we could live. Somebody say amen. amen. That he was buried, that he was raised on the third day to, according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Cephas is Peter. He appeared to Peter. Peter is one of his 12 disciples, and Jesus died on the, on the cross, and he was there. And then they bury him in a tomb, and then Jesus rolls a stone back, and he's just unstoppable. He might, he might not even have rolled the stone back. The stone was rolled back. He may have just kind of walked through the wall. I mean, it's just Jesus. There's nothing he can't do. Here's, here's the thing you need to understand, and take your stand in this too. Take a stand on it. That because Jesus is miracle work, he can do anything at any time. I'm not by myself. I'm not by myself. That means things that I can't do since I'm not by myself, I can give to Jesus. So I take my stand often when I'm in a, a fight or a battle in the natural realm I'm going to take my stand in Jesus that Jesus can do that because Jesus can do anything. Sometimes you're battling. It's a battle you shouldn't battle. You should give it to Jesus. If you're married, don't battle with your spouse. Give it to Jesus. You know, you, you, you say, that crazy woman, Lord, that you gave me. All right. give, give her to Jesus. And then the Lord. Here's, here's what I, I, when there's that early in our, our marriage, our relationship, 
Dirigent would say or do stuff, and I would like, God, that woman, Lord, you know. And he would every time, every time, every time start with correcting me. Every time. I would say, this woman said, blah, 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 blah. He would say, Gordon, if you would stop, and if you would serve her, and if you would do so-and-so, and I'm like, why is it always me? Because just all the time. I'm just telling you, typically, the Lord's going to start some stuff. He's going to change. He's going to start changing you. So I just start realizing there's it was right and I was wrong. <laughs> and, I, and he started giving us victory. I'm just telling you, it's a, it's a place of victory for you if you walk in it. Then he appeared to James and all the apostles. Last of all, Paul says in verse 8, as to one born out of the, at the wrong time, he also appeared to me. Paul was one of the apostles who persecuted the church. For I am the least of the apostles, not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. I think, I think Paul, he's writing this letter to the, to the letter and to the church in Corinth, and, and he says for a second, he gets a little, just for a moment, for half a second, he, he starts just the process of just really, just talk, just bragging, just a little bit, just, but I, on the contrary, I worked harder than any of them. And then, and before he can get it actually completely written down, I think the Spirit comes and checks him, just checks him. He, it, it wasn't really you, Paul, working. It was really me working in you, Paul. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't the letters that you were writing that made them holy. It's the letters that I was writing through you that made them holy. It's not, it's not the great gift of or, oration that you have. It's just the faithfulness that I have shown. And Paul goes, hey, hey. Before he can, before he can send it, before he can press it and it goes out he, he realizes it's, the, it's King Jesus that's done this and I am I am just a servant I take I take my stand as a servant not as not as a son but by the grace of God I am what I am and his grace toward me was not in vain Verse 12 says, Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some say there is no resurrection? They'll stand up again. So, so we will all stand up again. We will all experience this, this bond with Jesus so that we have life forever. Go to verse 20, and I'm going to close. But as it is, Christ has, has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Do you know that you will never die? You will never die. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For just as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all we make made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first, Christ number one, then afterward at his coming, us us who belong to Christ, those of us who are born again, those of us who have given our life to Jesus, we will, we will experience resurrection. The word resurrection means to stand up again. It just, it just you'll lay down. You'll never die. Death has no grip, no authority, no power over you. You'll stand up again. It's like stepping into the shower and you clean up, and, but now you're wet. So you just grab a towel. Wipe your face. Start cleaning up your body. You, you look better. You smell better. You feel better. You stand up again. Resurrection is just like that. Just, you're just going to stand up again. All, all the junk, all the trials, all the issues, all the challenges, all the pain, all the shortcomings, all the stuff that's in your brain, all that stuff will be gone. You'll stand up again, be like Jesus, full of the power of God, the majesty of God. Let me close with this.
Scripture says in verse 24, then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, when he abolishes all rule, all authority, all power, for he must reign until he puts all his enemies under his feet, and the last enemy, the last enemy to be abolished, help me, church, is death. Last one is death. You'll never die. You'll stand up again. You'll never die. Don't ever be afraid of death. Don't let the enemy come and bring, oh, man, be careful. It's dangerous. Stop it. I belong to Jesus. And I have angels that are here with me. You just can't see them. They're not, they're not instant, but they're constant. There's never a time I'm by myself. King Jesus is always with me. He sent his angels to to fight for me in the spiritual realm. Make a way when there's no way, because that's his way. The last enemy, that last one that's trying to cause fear and uncertainty in you, the last one is already defeated. He's already destroyed. It's just death. You'll never, you'll never die. It will always prevail. Since sin came to a man, the resurrection of the dead, comes to the man, Christ Jesus. Let me encourage you to get along with those around you. You'll be living with these guys forever. Great people, holy people, faithful people, mighty warriors. Be mighty. God is mighty in you. Be mighty. God is mighty in you. Father, in the name of Jesus, let every word be sealed and settled according to your desire. We are your sons and your daughters. We look like you and talk like you, and you've given us authority in your kingdom. We know that we can do things that we've never been able to do before, but you have empowered us now, today, tonight. Be extraordinary, God. We take our stand in who you are, Christ Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords. You died to give me life, I embrace the life you've given me, and I will use it to serve others according to your way. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. Along the journey, you find there's some, something that's lacking. Ask the king. He's with you. You're not alone. He'll take care of it. I promise you that. He's good at it. It's not always the way we'd like it, but it's always a good way. Father, we ask that you seal and settle this time with us according to your desire in Jesus' name. Somebody said amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for being here.